I say that we live in a society which is very committed to a psychological interpretation. We are a psychological interpretation. We figure each other out and figure ourselves out in a structure of psychological interpretation, like a set of assessments. We'll be talking more about that, and that will get clearer to you as we go along. And I want to be clear with you tonight that tonight is not about psychology, nor philosophy, nor theology, nor sociology. It's an inquiry into being in the domain of being, in an ontological domain, if you like. We're going to be investigating our own authenticity. We're going to be coming to grips with our own authenticity, the nature of our being. Now, we abhor the notion of being inauthentic. We absolutely abhor it. We live in a society in which the name of the game is look good. And if you examine your own actions and your own thoughts and your own feelings, from the possibility that I just mentioned to you, stand in the space and look out from that space of possibility that a great deal of what you think and do and feel is shaped by a kind of cultural commitment to looking good. See, it's not that you ever woke up one morning and say, gee, what my life's going to be about is about looking good. No, you showed up in the commitment to looking good. So I want you to be very clear that I have no concern for how you look tonight, nor for how I look, nor do I even have a concern for how human beings look. I have a concern for honesty, like ruthless honesty. And I'm going to invite you tonight to take a ruthlessly honest look at our own inauthenticity. Like I said, we abhor any possibility of being inauthentic. And that makes us inauthentic about being inauthentic. So we are essentially a cover-up for our own inauthenticity. That's what prompts Heidegger to talk about the need for violence. The need to break through this inauthenticity about our own inauthenticity. So that maybe what we'll accomplish tonight, the possibility is that at least we can come to some degree of authenticity about our inauthenticity. Now that's going to be very strange for most of the people in this room. Because the first thing you and I want to do when we find out something's wrong is fix it. That's that listening for solutions. That's that listening for getting better. That's that interpretation, that commitment about looking good. So I'm inviting you tonight to hold off on solving the problem of your own inauthenticity. I'm rather inviting you to do an experiment with me to see what can happen in a practical, hard-headed way in terms of empowering yourself in your everyday concerns, in your everyday being in the world, by being authentic about your own inauthenticity. Engaging in this question, what kind of a being is a human being? I'm inviting you tonight to give yourself permission to be with your own inauthenticity. Because the beginning of this evening is really devoted to coming to an authenticity about our own inauthenticity. I'm asking you to be in the question, to be in the opening the question is, to be in the clearing of the question and the possibilities we examine to get beyond what you think or feel, beyond your opinion or belief, and just be in the clearing of the question, looking out, not to validate the question, 
not to validate the possibility or invalidate it, but looking out from the possibility, looking out from the space, just to see what you see when you're looking from that space at your everyday being in the world, at your everyday concerns. Be with your own life tonight. Be in the space of possibility that the work is looking out at and being with your own life. The way you live, be with that, be with what you say, be with what you think, what you feel, what you do, be with what you don't do, be with what you don't say and what you don't think and you don't feel. See, we want to see how does being show up in an everyday way of being in the world for human beings. This is not esoteric or complex. It's simple, truthful look at what's present when you look at your life from the space of certain questions, from the space of certain possibilities. You may be surprised by some of the answers. You may even be dismayed by some of the answers. As a matter of fact, I suggest that you will be. Now, this thing about what everybody knows. See, there was a time when everybody knew that there were witches. There are witches. So we burn people at the stake because there are witches. Lots of very terrible things have happened in our civilization, in our society, because of certain things which are so. Now, by now, you and I all know that witches don't exist. It's a superstition. We've stopped burning people for being witches. But I want you to consider something. First off, I want you to see that superstitions are very powerful. And they're only powerful Superstitions are only powerful when they're not superstitions. You see, if I say that a black cat walking in front of me is bad luck, the black cat as an is will determine my behavior. That's real power. Or more accurately, that's real force. So I want, I'm inviting you to consider the possibility of the enormous power that superstition has and then further to look at the fact that a superstition is only a superstition when it is not a superstition. A superstition is only a superstition when it's an is. The black cat walking in front of me is bad luck and all of those things in my life which are so determine the conduct of my life not only the conduct of my life but in many ways the quality of my life but suppose you don't say more accurately you aren't that black cats are bad luck and you aren't even that black cats are thought to be bad luck but who you are is black cats being bad luck is a superstition now I say that that's a remarkable insight I say that it is a remarkable insight and it begins to give you certain insights into your own life when you recognize that superstitions have enormous force in people's lives. They determine the options with which people live. And that a superstition can be disempowered unforced by simply recognizing it as a superstition and that any step in the direction away from is towards superstition gives a person more and more 
freedom to be, more and more freedom to live, more of a breaking open of possibility, more empowerment. So I'm saying that if there are things in your life which are for you and is, and more likely than not, you are unaware that you are unaware of them, that simply becoming aware of them produces a breaking open in your everyday way of being in the world. Now I'm going to say something, and what I'm going to say I'm not saying is true. <coughs> and I am going to say it, and I'm not a guy in a diner. I say that the you that you are when you say I am is a superstition. That's a very strange thing to say, but I'm saying it anyhow, and I mean it. And I didn't say it was true. But I'm just inviting you to stick your toe in, and tonight we'll see how far you want to get inside of the I that you're speaking about when you say, I think. You know that I and the phrase I think, the I that that points at? I'm suggesting to you that that's a superstition. Now, you don't even think that you're that. You are that you're that. You are that you are the I that's pointed to in the phrase I think. You are that you are the I which is pointed to in the phrase I feel. You are. It's not even that you think these things. It's not that you believe them even. You are that you are this. Much deeper, like a real superstition. Like one that isn't even considered. Like one to which you are blind. I say that you are, that you are the I pointed at in the phrase, I like, I don't like, I want, I don't want, I think, I feel, I believe. And I say that that's a superstition. 